The Netherlands has been called the tiny country that feeds the world. With over 100 million livestock, it is the largest meat exporter in Europe and the second largest exporter of food globally by value after the United States. On the 15th of December, the new Dutch coalition government announced that it was cutting livestock by a third to reduce nitrogen pollution from animal waste. The 25 billion euro plan will either offer to buy out farmers, relocate them, or resort to expropriation measures if farmers prove less than willing to sell. Although many farmers share the vision to clean up the environment, they naturally oppose the controversial expropriation measures. But how does farming create nitrogen emissions? Practically everyone living in the Netherlands is contributing to the country's so-called nitrogen crisis. If you have a stove that runs on gas in your home, then this also contributes to the country's nitrogen emissions. Of course, this is only on a very small scale. Nitrogen oxides are also released by cars and planes, and in a number of factories and industries, including farming. In the agricultural industry, the production of ammonia is the key issue. But why does farming emit so much nitrogen? It all comes down to the livestock. Ammonia is produced when animal excretion comes into contact with oxygen, releasing nitrogen oxides into the atmosphere. Figures suggest that Dutch farms, specifically dairy farms, are responsible for a significant amount of the country's overall nitrogen emissions. Waste and pollution is a key risk facing the global protein production industry. As highlighted in the Kohler Fair Protein Producer Index, European companies on average were ranked as high risk for the waste and pollution risk factor, along with all associated KPIs. Given the growing regulatory risks surrounding waste and pollution in Europe and a lack of disclosure from companies, there is a material risk for those firms investing in European protein producers. The threat of animal waste pollution stretches beyond Europe. In the U.S., slaughterhouses have been polluting waterways with excessive levels of nitrogen and phosphorus. In 2020, 18 facilities owned by JBS, Tyson, and Smithfield discharged the equivalent amount of nitrogen as the raw sewage of 2.5 million people. Of the 34 facilities assessed, nitrogen and phosphorus discharge were more than 500% over the maximum allowable load, with some Tyson plants discharging 8,445% more than the nitrogen limit, and 12,000% of the phosphorus limit. So what is the Dutch government's nitrogen policy? Since the 1990s, the Dutch government has worked to implement policies to limit the Netherlands' carbon footprint in nitrogen emissions. Many of these policies have proved successful, significantly reducing nitrogen emissions across a number of sectors and industries. However, one industry in particular has spent years fighting the government's approach. Nitrogen emissions in the Dutch agricultural sector haven't been falling at the rate the government and environmental groups had hoped, meaning that back in 2019, the cabinet moved to introduce tougher rules for farmers. These measures include ensuring livestock receives feed with low protein levels and providing funding to buy livestock from farmers who want to stop farming. Over the past three years, farmers from across the Netherlands have held and attended various protests in order to fight back against the government's approach. Now, what could be the solution to this problem? Tackling the nitrogen crisis through livestock reduction has the potential to create positive outcomes for other issues influenced by intensive animal agriculture. A reduction in livestock, for example, would see less nitrogen ending up in surrounding waterways, as well as a reduction in greenhouse gas emissions, deforestation, antibiotic use, and freshwater use. There have been reports of Dutch farmers selling their farms and relocating to other countries, such as Denmark and Germany, where land is cheaper. But who will fill the production gap of protein? Well, the answer is alternative protein. A proposal by the Dutch government has opened the potential for alternative proteins to fill the production gap. The government is becoming increasingly optimistic about the role that alternative protein could play in the future of protein production. The nitrogen crisis should therefore be seen as an opportunity for investors to encourage Dutch meat producers to shift production. The private sector in the Netherlands has been at the forefront of alternative proteins. The first ever cultivated meat burger was crafted by Dutch professors. Although farmers and their unions have supported the idea of tackling the nitrogen crisis at the regulatory level, they have reacted negatively to the idea of expropriation, questioning whether the government should be allowed to push farmers out of the land. The head of LTO, the largest farmers association in the Netherlands, has argued that big issues do not get resolved in the Netherlands through force or judicial measures. You can only solve them via consultation and mutual arrangements. That way you become part of the solution. Other farmers have called for the government to give them more time to innovate to reduce pollution levels on their farms. 
with one farmer adding, The problem does not go away when I go away. It goes to another country. The government has failed to release any details on the just transition or about supporting farmers financially. Van der Waal's goal has huge consequences for farmers operating in these areas, as they'll have to significantly reduce their livestock. The proposal features five options for reducing emissions. Invest in sustainable technologies to ensure cleaner stables. Switch to circular agriculture, i.e. use only the space and resources that are absolutely necessary. Adjust the farm's business model, i.e. limit livestock numbers, change crops, use land to establish another business. Move house, quit farming. Perhaps unsurprisingly, thousands of farmers have expressed anger about these proposed solutions, explaining that Van der Waal's suggestions have left them feeling uncertain about their futures and the future of their families. They also argue that, for years, the Dutch government invested heavily in agriculture, encouraging farmers to expand their businesses, and that the new plan is in complete opposition to earlier policies. They say that the government's plan will lead to the wide-scale destruction of rural society in the Netherlands and the disappearance of a number of family businesses. They also argue that the policy to buy livestock and farms will cost Dutch citizens more in taxes than investing in innovation would, and that scaling down the Dutch agricultural industry would mean the country would have to import more food from abroad, thereby increasing the country's overall carbon footprint. Now, what do the farmers want? The main point the farmers are making is that the current approach for reducing nitrogen emissions isn't feasible or fair. Instead, they would like to see the government explore other solutions to the nitrogen crisis. Do not buy out farmers, but have them switch to a nature-inclusive business model, starting with the farmers who operate their farms near Natura 2000 acres. That is what nature-inclusive farmer Moritz Tepper argues for. Buying out is not an option. It is not wise to have all farmers scale down now, says Moritz Tepper. Instead, he advocates that the government encourage farmers with laws, regulations, and money to help them switch to an integrated business model. Tepper has been working in a nature-inclusive way for a number of years. He is already seeing an effect. Meadow birds are returning and phosphate emissions are decreasing. At the same time, he makes a profit. We currently produce 22 liters of milk per cow per day. With the robot, without fertilizer, without concentrate, without fuel. He doesn't have to mow because the cows always graze a new piece of grass that he demarcates. They also walk to the milking robot themselves. Power for the milking robot, water, and the soil make up the bulk of its costs. Tepper believes that a nature-inclusive model can work for many farmers. A few farmers who are good at it should continue on the high-yielding tour, but the rest can and should switch. We need to find an agricultural system where there is simply a balance between production and the natural resources that are available. But how do you make cows and cheese sustainable? Regenerative farming is the solution. Regenerative farming means you give back to the land more than you take in. Just van Shi, one of the new farmers, demonstrates how to continue farming cows and cheese in the context of a nitrogen crisis. He has inherited his parents' organic dairy farm, which he's transforming into a regenerative farm. Van Shi says he studied economics in Amsterdam before working in business for eight years. He says, When I learned that my parents had no successors, I was heartbroken. So I went to see if there were any ways to make the business more sustainable. Van Shi farms vegetables and herbs in addition to milk and cheese. Van Shi has also lately begun to raise hens for soil improvement and egg sales. Van Shi opened his own store to better understand consumer needs and to shorten the supply chain. Every morning, fresh produce from local farmers is delivered to this unmanned shop. You unlock the shop's door with an app where you may buy eggs, veggies, bread, and, for example, elderflower syrup from other farms in the region, as well as cheese from the island. You can then pay using the app. Local residents can also provide feedback. How cool and sustainable is that? Well, that's it from this video. What do you think of the Dutch nitrogen crisis and farmers' protests? Do you think regenerative agriculture is the ultimate solution to this problem? Share your thoughts by commenting below. If you enjoyed this video, hit like and share this video with your friends to help spread awareness. Also, consider subscribing to our channel for more interesting videos every week.